So I will be sitting. Oh, oh, you're, oh, or you want me to stand? No, let's stand. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. There you go. There you go. This is happening. Okay, here we go. Yes, it is. Okay. Hi, everyone. Um, oh, good afternoon. Yeah. And thank you again to the um, Gatewood family, Tanko Gatewood family, for hosting this this afternoon. And thank you guys for coming and supporting um, my great grandmother. So if you actually look, you got four generations in this room. You have her, and then you have my auntie Scylla, then you have my mom, and then you have me. So I'm actually, it's kind of funny because Ava over there, even though she's a sophomore in high school and I'm a um, junior, senior in college, she's actually my aunt. Um, yeah, so it I happens. get that a lot. It happens. Happens. <laughs> Does she opt you on in her? I should, but I don't. <laughs> But I will if she wants me to. <laughs> um, so just a few things to say before we get started. You know, it's just kind of a weird position for me because when you grow up with someone, knowing what they kind of went through as a young person, you know, kind of getting an idea when you go through school on Guam, getting the history of Guam, I'm like, oh, that's my great grandma's name on that wall, or oh, that's my you know, my relative's name on that wall or on that list, you kind of lose sight on exactly what it is that they went through because you're so accustomed to hearing about it. So it's kind of interesting now to be sitting here and learning her story through a different perspective, especially now that I'm older and it's something that I can appreciate a little bit more. Um, and I just want to say that, you know, right now, I hear it a lot from my mom, I hear it a lot from everyone, us millennials or Gen Z people, we don't really seem to appreciate what the generations before us have went through. And I don't think that's necessarily true because looking at my great grandma and what she's been through and then what we're going through right now, sorry, <laughs> it's, um, you know, it makes it a little bit easier waking up and having to put a mask on every day because you don't have to you know, stay in the jungle. You don't have to worry about, am I gonna live tomorrow? And growing up with my great grandma, I tend to not, I, I appreciate the past, but I tend to not appreciate the present as what she's been through and knowing that she's here with me. And yeah, so <laughs> um, I, just, I just hope that everyone can listen to whatever it is she has to say. Um, as much as it is she has to say, as little it is that she has to say, and learn to appreciate it. And even though we're going through this pandemic, we're able to wake up and thank God that, okay, yes, we're going through this pandemic, but at least we're not living through a war. Um, at least we know that we're able to wake up with the freedom of waking up and not the freedom of not knowing if I'm even going to eat the next day. So thank you everyone for coming and Sorry I got emotional, but um, yeah, thank you so much. And thank you to my great grandma for being a strong woman, even though she's gone through many difficult times and is still going through some um, other difficult times. But at least we can all appreciate her and support her. And she's always here to support us because without her and the people like her, we wouldn't be here today. Thank you. Be very careful. Keandra, thank you very much for sharing that today. You're welcome. We really appreciate it. Okay. Auntie Lula, are you ready? Let us sing together. I'm just kidding. We're going <laughs> to We will start. Yes, we will sing later. That's for sure. You know what? I'm going to ask Auntie Lula to take us back to December 1941. We know that between the 8th and the 10th, that, um, that Guam was under attack. But do you still remember what was happening on that first day, December 8th? Can you share with us what you remember? Well, that morning, I forgot the, the hour. But early that morning, December, and uh, in my, in, my, in my family, we have to share uh, which one is going to mass. 
and it happened that uh, I was going to do to mass before going to to the second mass because uh, we have to share our you know in the house who's going and who's done. So it happened that I was Joseph and my mother and she said, Lucia, can you go and uh, take this pair of uh, pajamas to the neighbor house too and give this to your brother because he needed it. He was uh, admitted at the neighbor house too, right across um, the church in Adana. And that was really the one. So I said, okay, let me take it, let me take it and I'll be back. But I didn't know what's happening. So just then I went to the, to the hospital and I was in the top of the stairs and my brother was there waiting for me to get the pajamas. And then he, people are coming out from the ward because they heard the planes are coming in from from Shubai. And gee, well, my brother said, Lula, please go home. They have done this and you go home, right? Go right straight home. Because we don't know whose plane are coming in. There was a lot of plane coming from that side. And I was at the level hospital. So I was very scared. And I said, okay, brother. So I'm going to see, he said, hurry up, hurry up. So I went down the step and I went past the, the church. The people are crying, coming out from the church. And that was about maybe eight o'clock. So I ran as fast as I can and I went into the um, plaza, plaza de Spano, and I cut my way right under the government house because there's a uh, place there that we can go around because that, there are offices there. So I ran up to the step and I was crying and the people that was there in the office, they said, why are you crying? I said, I don't know, but my brother told me to hurry home because that's a plane coming in. So the people came out and they started, run, run to your house. So I went across the museum and I went right straight to my house. And there my mother was crying and she said, hurry up, hurry up, Lucia. Take this and take the, take uh, um, any kind of, any, anything that can, uh, you can carry. And you go to Tata Baby's house. Mrs. Tucker, mm -hmm. go and stay there and ride with them because we will be meeting you up in Jonah. So there's the 20 people coming to, to uh, ask us to ride in the gym. So my uncle said, you people first go up and then let them drop you and stay there at the ranch and wait for us. That's the first time I I was crying, everybody was crying. So I just take a, a, a bundle of, I don't know if it's something there, but I carried it and then went to my uncle's house. So we arrived on that. Let's tell everybody how old you were and how many siblings you had at that time. Oh, they, I, I, I don't think at that hour because we don't know what, what's happening, so I, I said, oh, I'm going to, to wait my, my mother talk because in the, and she sat the house because she said, come back and take some more. So that's the time we now. I was so dying everybody. Were you 15 years old? Oh, 14. You were 14 years old. And how many brothers and sisters did you have? <laughs> My brother, one, my oldest brother, no, uh, yeah, my oldest brother, one, and uh, Boucher, my 
Yeah, they do a thing. They were already at the uh, at my uncle's house. They were getting ready. And uh, my mother and my sister and my parents. <laughs> I don't know if they were still out or who stayed at one time. But we rode on the chimney. And the Tampepe said, go and write, go rest up to the grass. And we drop there and come back and pick us up. That's only so, no. I don't know what it is. It's okay. Tell us what happened when you were at your uncle's and then um, in 1942 or 1943. Can you share with us any events from 1942 or 1943 before the liberation? You want to share that with us? Well, I'm going to do it. Mom, do you remember the story of how you guys were hiding up on the top of the attic? Oh, <laughs> that, that's after Henry and yet that the baby came from bringing some poor people. So as soon as uh, he came, he told Nanina, the wife, uh, Anna, that all the, the things that you can pack and have it up in the alley and get some more supply, like water and uh, anything that you can, you know, so that's what he did. And then he came, the Tantepi came and he said, it's getting it, uh, it's getting dark and uh, I want you people to get up to the attic. And after you were up in the attic, uh, take down the ladder and hide the ladder in the Buddhist. So that the Japanese, when they come, they don't see you no know, any takes to get up in the attic and they don't notice that we go up there and no, nothing, you cannot hear anything because that that baby said, don't say anything, let the children hide or take the children, the little children in the boonies, just ask the ladies, you know, because we're the people and we're all getting old and you know the junkies who very see I look at birds for girls, people. <laughs> so that's why they told us to be quiet because they have the water, everything there in the alley. We got cans for us to use when you did it, no? And uh, they said, please, no more. If you're going to use it, just leave it at a time, please. <laughs> that they won't know that they were in there. So that's the last thing we will first take the tongue they say. No, no noise and try to, to uh, save water. And they put them a little bit at a time. Because this is a long way to go. So lucky that Nanina, the wife, eh, was downstairs and the Tantepi said, Anna, don't make any noise and just talk to them. And imagine, the Nina knows how to speak Japanese. <laughs> She's the one who's talking to the Japanese to keep them downstairs there and not to hear any noise. So that's the first thing we, when we came to Georgia. So you mentioned that on December 8th, it was a very, very scary day for you. Scary day. Yes. So what I'm is... I'm I don't know why I'm so So what was another really scary experience that you lived through that you could share with all of us? Oh, well, after those days, lucky we were safe eh, from the Japanese because Nanina knows how to speak in Japanese. <laughs> So we were very quiet in that little 
king. He's a uh, Mr. King. <laughs> I left speaking name. So, my brother said, what I'm going to do, I'm not, I cannot uh, stay and uh, check on you. I'll go to my house. Then 
Um, but specifically with regard to the liberation, when you, where were you when you found out that the um, American uh, military was coming in uh, to liberate uh, Guam? Where were you? And what was the situation like? In the beginning, we went hiding. The Japanese were bombing already. So we're hiding in, in between the river, in the Asian River. They take them to ground city and decide to ask to go in and hide them. And the Japanese were up on top of the river. And the river where we were hiding, they were there uh, sitting down because they were happy because that's the Japanese industry. Give me one second, I'm sorry. How about you hand I just said I don't want to interrupt her. But where's the Paasan River? What what village is it? Yeah. Is it near Gang Is it Gangan? Where? Yeah. Again, you back there. I just want to be there with her. Just yeah. want to be there with her. <laughs> yeah, do you know what I mean? I'm like a very, a very visual person, so I'm like, where is that? Is that near Benangan? Okay. So go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> so you oh you could hear you were hiding no anything. Because here is the bombing from the ocean, bombing in to that place. And there's a lot of people that died there. I got family there. Yeah. But what can we do? Right. As soon as there's blood, there, somebody will go to the river in the other country to lost for the cross the clothes that are in blood all over. You can see the, the uh, there's a ducky that we have, uh, they did that in some nurse. And the mother was, was uh, a cut by the stomach. And the, even the stomach is coming out and now. So um, when they had to, to go to dress up, they had to go to the river and wash the and they didn't know it there. On the other side, big candy, water, and everything. We're all cool. But they got us time, but I guess now I have to get to know that I'm still and my some of my family. Thanks a lot. Auntie Lula, let us talk about when the Americans liberated you. Where, what were you doing at that time? Think about July 19, 2021, during the liberation. What were you, what was your family doing? What were you doing at that time? Oh, we were already uh, like uh, settling down, no? Little by little, you see that? The, 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 um, the Japanese are taking, taking over more and uh, that's the time when we were sent up to, to the field and the work, cutting, going to the base, everything. We have to do some work. Do you it's remember strong. Grandpa telling you? Do you remember Grandpa telling you that the Americans were coming? Do you remember Grandpa telling you when the Americans were coming? Just share with us a little bit about Menegan. Uh, for uh, those of you who are not familiar, but I'm sure all of you are, I'm just going to say it anyway. It was, uh, it, uh, Menegan was known as a concentration camp. If you're familiar uh, uh, with uh, Palanta and Jotna, that is actually is the area. Or if you're familiar with Leo Palace Resort, that is Menegan. Yes, yes. And exactly, exactly. And uh, it actually, we found out later on, um, that what the Japanese military was doing was they were rounding up as many of the Chamorros, as many as many of the residents as they could, to put all of them into one spot yeah. so that they could blow it up. And so you find that out later. Some people just refer to it as just a concentration camp, but they were literally having people march to their death eventually. Yeah. And so Auntie Lula is, Lula is telling us right now that that she was also in Menengen. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of people. I thought they're starting. Going to Manyangu 
should do a real show that they place us there. And you know how we have to cut trees to get to get uh, leaves to make a uh, is that to show uh, your shelter like like that's your place and you can sleep in that place. So in the beginning you know, we came up there to the beginning. We know already where we were to stay, to stay because some people already cut trees. You think that they look trees to to uh, make a take take to to sleep? I mean to yeah because uh, that place is like this, straight, like square. I can remember that place. So you have to make them shut. You to stay and your family. Only people can go to the shop. Yeah, because it's <laughs> that and and coconut leaf. So everybody has to build them. Yeah, and one thing again, what are you going to eat when you're doing is just going walking, looking for where to, to live. And now, uh, you don't take food. If you go there, you have to stay there and check what you're, what you're doing. Lucky you the same here. Look, sir. But nothing good, eh? It's what we're going to carry. We're carrying. How many things? How many can you carry from Kanya or from Zognya to Ningu down in the valley? And if you get some, uh, like, like uh, rice, you can cook the rice in a can and go you eat. And if there's a, if there's children crying because they're not uh, hungry, of course you have to share it to meet the ladies and there's people that are big and punishment. They hit them in the back to Hurry, hurry. When you're walking in the river, river, they can do that. To make you hurry up. Oh my goodness. Lucky that I got two brothers and uh, they just come here that I'm not know to make it. To make it safe. One time, my mother said, Lucia, you like, you do in like this. So that uh, you can taste that water or whatever if you're hungry. Just then my mother was trying to to milk it time. My mother was saying, Lucia, Lucia, your hair is burning. <laughs> because uh, we don't know now whether there's a fire over there or because anywhere you can milk it. The Japanese is just going to come to hit you. It hits you in the back or to well, let me let me just tell you that um, what what she is saying here, uh, where there were people who had to walk uh, across uh, rivers, they would have crowds of, of families doing this, and it didn't matter if a woman was in her ninth month of pregnancy. Um, just the Japanese soldiers at that time, and it's only because that's what they were commanded to do uh, were very violent uh, with the Chamorros. And so they, what they would do is, is um, just to hurry people along, as Auntie Lula said, they would actually, they didn't care if they pushed people aside. Um, they were just very, very aggressive with them. She also talked about how some of the children were malnourished. And so you see different families sharing food with other families. And this is actually the Chamorro way. It's actually very beautiful, just this whole concept of, of sharing. Um, but there really were points where it got to the extent uh, that where, where there would be infants and their, their parents themselves were malnourished, that they would actually have different children breastfeeding off of one woman. And so that was a, a, a regular occurrence that happened uh, during this time. And so she is sharing all of this. And I just wanted to make sure that you kept those little visual details in your mind as she shares with you uh, her personal experience. Are you able to tell us of, of uh, maybe one incident uh, in the Nengen, uh, aside from all of 
the, the terrible things you're, you're sharing with us now, and we're just so sorry about that, um, that really um, uh, you, you still think of today sometimes, just, just something that happened that was just, just terrible during that time. <laughs> oh. um, they started out to make us work, you know, anybody that can chop, so they pull us up and they pick us, I mean, six of us, girls from the Ghana Heights, uh, girls, so they, they pick us up, six, and I'm one of them, but I put it in mind that if I follow the line, we six, six girls, I'll be the first one to be, to be punished. So I said, God, please tell me what to do. Please, God, help me, help me. So one time I, the first one that they talked to near in the Tatsu's quarters, one lady was the first one. They told her to go over there and take out the tape from the Japanese that are wounded. So that's number one. Then came the other one. And uh, all I'm thinking is, God, God, please help me not to suffer like that because they keep on one by one. So I finally placed myself in the last line and the other the others are shaking already because the bodies they keep on slapping. Imagine our body is too small to be slapping hard. So the other one they told her to go and slap. The reason why they punished us is because we did we didn't work the next day, and they told us to work, come and work the next day. But we didn't go there because the plane are flying all over, and they told us not to to go. We have to hide under the grass. So anyway, when the late the, the second lady were sent up to the grass and help the people that are cooking in the in the back, they were cooking the uh, dog food, everything they were cooking. So the number three, they told her to go and come to coconut because they were cooking. And that's what they to cook the, the uh, dog food. <laughs> so the other one, number four, oh, when I came to the number four, I said, please God, I keep on praying by myself. Please God, tell me what to do, and I don't want to be punished. Please God, help me. Let my mother and my family at home. Please help me, so that they won't have to slap me, because I'm, I'm red all over here, because it's slapping. And then another thing. He said, if, if you lie, we'll take you in. And we'll make the, the valley over here. So I said, God, thank you. Help my, my family at home. And uh, because I cannot make it anymore. So maybe it's because I keep on praying in my and please help me, help me what to do. And imagine, when I think of my father, because they ask me, where's your father? Where's your working? They go, I don't have a father. My father is in the state. The other the, the, the deputy, second he said, I shall say that. He said, where's your father? I said, my father, you're going to check it. My father is not here. He's in this stage. I just want to say, he said, that's you. But I, we don't know where. I said, I maybe they're going to cut my head off because of my father. 
But maybe it's because I'm cry and pray deep in my heart. Please save me. Please help my family. But they don't they think can I hear but they place the baby. They place it here. That's what I suffered. And they put me, the interpreter is a Saipanese lady. She said, ma'am, don't lie. I said, if you lie, they'll take you. They'll take you to outside the, the house, outside the Japanese uh, tenant. There's full of water in the drum. Imagine drum a model there, they fill up the back of the Taichu house. So the, the, the Taichu said, uh, ask how for the, how comes that she didn't work at the study. They make that story again. So I keep praying because I'm the last one. And uh, the lady said, uh, please don't, don't, don't die. Don't lie, tell the truth. So, what is my answer? She said, why did you come? Tell me to work. I said, God, help me what I'm going to do. Because I'm not sick then. I don't do. So, the lady said, you better tell me the truth. So he put the bayonet here on me. And I said, oh my God, I'm gonna die. And you know what? Now I'm going to use the bathroom in the inside the banana leaf and plantation it. And I pray again. God, please let me do something so that I can show them my food that I'm sick. But you know what? I pee in the coconut. That they cut me the coconut and I took the stick and I stir it. And I, the lady said, Take it to the Taichu and make the truth come if you really sick now you don't have to. Work. So that's what they do. People are laughing at me because I'm saying here what I did, but it helps me with that cup of uh, coconut that they cut. Yeah, to be sure. And then uh, they told me, they're laughing at me because I'm the only one doing the line. No? So the, um, the lady said, tell them the truth. Show them that it's water breathing. I hear I mean, the Japanese said, okay. Go, go, Kura, uh, to watch myself in the donkey, in the big trunk, no wonder. Imagine, I thought they were going to drown me there. Maybe it's because I keep on praying. It is. Prayer is powerful. Uh -huh. So that's the last one, but I, and another thing, the three people that were, were killed in the, my name was uh, Taki. I was there. All the people that are working, they let them fly out. And the three persons were placed in the, in the uh, kneeling because they told the people to dig the ground for the three men that were going to be cut. So they let us stand round the, round the people that are lying out. So that's how it is when, when you walk, when you're working and they let you sleep, it, stay, stay around these people that are going to be killed. Dream me. No, you did. So if you, if you show yourself that you're crying or they told you that you can go in there and be killed. Because I said the dream men, I want dream men. Said, I see you do it so good. He's got good. He said, I'm a skate guard. 
they will take you because uh, they're going to cut. And of course, and you cannot miss the, you're going to face the people that are suffering, grounding the head and shooting. And if you see you crying, they're going to make you join them. The old man said, please, people, pray, pray for them. Because I, I, I did commit sin, but I take this punishment. Three dead men. <sighs> we were all running. So it's getting dark already. But if, if they see you now, you make it an action. Look, take it. That's another.